All right, in this scene over here, we're gonna have a lot of fun learning about the coagulation cascade. And what better place to talk about the coagulation cascade than at a cascade, a water cascade, or a waterfall. All right, so let's make this really easy and really simple. We see all these numbers falling down. Luckily, they are falling down into this fibrous mesh, which reminds us of the purpose of the coagulation cascade, to produce a fibrous mesh. This fibrous mesh stabilizes the platelet plug that was formed in primary hemostasis. All right, now let's get to the numbers. On this side, we're gonna have the intrinsic pathway, and on this side, we're gonna have the extrinsic pathway. Both of these pathways lead to the number 10, to factor 10, which leads us to the common pathway. Now, the common pathway is the easiest, because 1 times 2 times 5 is 10. So this is easy, but let's talk about the intrinsic pathway. The intrinsic pathway begins with 12, which is cleaved, then 11 is cleaved. Now we're gonna skip 10, because again, we want to get to 10. Then we get to 9, and then 8, and then again we get to 10. On the extrinsic pathway side, we begin with 7, which is cleaved, and then we get to 10. Now, where do we see more numbers over here? Of course, on the intrinsic pathway side, 12, 11, 9, and 8. So if we ask ourselves, which of these measurements does PTT measure and which does PT measure? We're gonna take PTT, which has more letters, and put it on this side where there are more numbers. So the PTT measures the intrinsic pathway, as well as the common pathway. And the PT measures the extrinsic pathway, where there's a seven. So PT measures the extrinsic pathway, as well as the common pathway. All right, now let's talk about some diseases. Let's begin with hemophilia A. Hemophilia A is a deficiency of factor eight. You could think of it as hemophilia 8 instead of A. So since this is a defect in the intrinsic pathway, only the PTT will be elevated, not the PT. Same thing in hemophilia B, where there's a deficiency of factor 9. I'm going to use the word benign to help me remember this. B9, benign. Hemophilia B is a deficiency of factor 9. In hemophilia C, there's a deficiency of factor 11, which again is part of the intrinsic pathway. So in all of these conditions, only the PTT will be elevated and not the PT. All of this is in contrast to in vitamin K deficiency. Vitamin K is important for activation of 2, 7, 9, and 10, as well as protein CS. So again, 2, 7, 9, 10. This involves factors from all of these pathways, and therefore in vitamin K deficiency, both the PT and the PTT will be elevated. And finally, in von Willebrand's disease. One of the things that von Willebrand factor does is that it protects factor 8. So without von Willebrand factor, factor 8 will not be protected and therefore this will lead to a defect in the intrinsic pathway. Von Willebrand disease, usually the PTT is elevated. However, the PT is not elevated. I just want to end off this scene talking about why there's this purple trombone coming out of the two. Purple trombone for prothrom, prothrombin, as factor two is known as prothrombin before it's cleaved to produce thrombin. And we have this fire over here on one. If you look closely, there's actually this gym over here. It's a fire on the gym. Fire on gym, fire fibrinogen, as factor 1 is known as fibrinogen before it's cleaved to produce the fibrin monomers. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the scene on the coagulation cascade. Take care.